So my name is William Petty. I run Centrifuge Training. Started in 2003 out in Albuquerque. Did patrol, uh, ERT, firearms instructor, all that good stuff. Ended up spending two years over in uh, the Middle East as an instructor for the Critical National Infrastructure Authority. I'm a cop now in the DFW area. Started back on patrol again and then uh, ended up running the firearms program for the academy. Okay, so injured shooter. We know from real world data running simulated scenarios and also NLTA programs that when guys get on the gun, they're taking a lot of hits in the hands, limbs, and, and whatnot. Being able to run the gun single-handedly or while injured is, is a crucial part to um, this, this line of work, but also just being a well-rounded uh, defensive shooter. One of the things we often see on the range, if I tell a cat like, hey, this hand is down, right? It got shot, it got bit by a dog, it got run over, it got lacerated, the knuckles are blown out on it, whatever. They'll let the entire arm dangle and now they're trying to track a threat or take distance shots, right? Less than ideal. Get the counter pressure of this limb that is ambulatory up on the gun. Realize that I'm gonna use whatever I have available, right? So if I've got a couple of fingers available on this hand and some that are not working, nothing gets a free ride, right? Everything is fighting for its life. Make sure that, that all uh, assets and resources are pooled right then to get on the gun, right? So counter pressure with this limb, right? And the fingers that I have available, use them. Don't waste this entire counter pressure. It'll help you with distance and it'll help you with tracking the threat. A crucial part to injured shooter is obviously keeping the gun fed, reloading, right? So let's talk about a couple of different ways we can do that. Dominant hand, it's pretty simple. We've got three different ways we can do that. We can do that on body, we can do that off body, um, and I'll, we'll talk about those. So getting the gun fed, we come back to the holster if it's available and it's convenient. Magazine goes into the gun that needs to be fed, run the slide either on body or off body on the barricade, uh, whatever we're using, cover concealment, all that good stuff, and then get back into play. If we are in a situation where the holster is not readily available, we're working a UC type role, um, I've got a lot of winter clothing and it's harder to get back to that, that holster, it may be more convenient to either to deck the gun on the barricade itself, right? So we'll deck the gun on whatever we're using, vehicle, structure, whatnot, jam the magazine in, we'll still need to run that slide, get back to work, right? Pinning the gun, right? So the third option is to go ahead and pin the gun roll that gun inboard, deck it in between the knees, secure that gun, reload it. We'll still need to run the slide, get back to work, right? So understanding that, that you're already having a bad day at the office, don't make it even worse by trying to figure it out on the fly, right? Two different malfunctions we start looking at. Fail to fires and fail to extract. So fail to fire, it's gonna be your tap rack, right? So we can go ahead and tap rack on body, meaning if we've got this nice giant Safari Land bucket, we can go ahead and tap rack on body. If we don't have a situation where we have access to something like this, we can use belt lines, uh, and we can use shoes if we're lower to the deck, and we can use the actual barricade or cover concealment that we're using, right? So we can go ahead and tap rack off that car, off that tree, off the side of the building, whatever we're using at the moment. For failed extracts, right? It's a little more tricky. Um, we need to unload, reload the gun. There's a couple of different ways we can do this. So one is to depress the magazine release and go ahead and strip the lip of the magazine on preferably something like a holster, right? So we're gonna go ahead and strip that lip on the holster itself. Um, this also works for magazines that don't wanna come out on reloads, right? So you see a lot of guys and they'll sit there and they'll just shake the, shake the gun like it's a, it's a shake weight, right? And, and that magazine is just like slowly kind of falling out. Uh, an easier way to do that, go ahead and depress the magazine release and, and rip that magazine out uh, using the cover, the concealment that you're working off of, or something that's that's got a thin line on your body. So holsters, holsters ideal. There are going to be times where that's not a, that's not available, right? So heavy winter clothing, uh, somewhere where I've got t-shirt, shorts on, leather holster, something like that. Or if I'm running uh, support hand up. So this hand is down, this arm is down, it's injured, it's out of out of play. We're going to have a harder time finding something on the body to strip that, that magazine off of. So we'll get into the second way to do that is to mortar strike that round out or just inertia strike that round out. It's called a couple of different things. What we're simply doing is depressing the magazine release. Now, there's pressure on the slide, right, that's pushing the next round of the magazine that's trying to feed into the stuck casing. Simply depressing the magazine release is not gonna drop that mag, right? So we've gotta put a little put a little umph behind it. Depress the magazine release, stiff wrist, and we're gonna hit that on something like a knee, uh, a structure, uh, tree, car, part, something that's not gonna give, right? That inertia will shoot that round or that magazine out 
From there, the slide will go forward. If we need to, we can run the slide again. Same thing, on body or off body, either way is fine. Whatever's gonna be more efficient in that particular environment. Then we'll need to load the gun, right? So magazine goes into the gun. We can do the reload off of the structure, car. We can do it on body, uh, simply coming back to the holster, or we can pin the gun. Magazine goes in, re, uh, reacquire, and do what you need to do. All right, so here's the thing. No one wants to improv a gunfight, right? So I have a saying, uh, improv is cool for jazz, improv is cool for comedy, improv is not so cool uh, when you're in a gunfight. Realize that your, your gunfight, and especially injured shooter, is not gonna look like a John Woo movie, right? You're not gonna have the doves flying off in the background behind you with the twisting hair. Uh, it's gritty, it's dirty, but it needs to work, right? So when we look at our, our manipulations injured shooter, we're looking for efficiency uh, behind the gun and efficiency on the manipulations. However you decide to do it, make sure that it is safe in environment, right? And it's efficient for solving the problem that's downrange. Make sure that you guys rep it out, get on it, it's important. It's one of those things we just never go to the range and train.